George is also a success story. George started off in our network operations, in our internal uh, IT department, and was a superstar in the IT department. Um, it didn't win him points with his bosses when he knows more than his bosses, but that's another story, right? <laughs> when you have to correct them all the time, but that's a side story. But anyway, the thing about George is, George was, was pure OS and applications, and he spotted something in security. And he took it upon himself to get a certified ethical hacker. Did you go through? I'm working on the GSEC, but I did You're get, working on GSEC. They've got a few, two Cisco's. But he took it upon himself without the company paying for it, which I'm not too big of a fan for. I'm not proud of it all. Although within our department now, we pay for a lot of training because yeah. this is the the pinnacle of our of our people are the Secure Operations Center and the professional security guys. So he does get training now. But George took it upon himself to learn and express an interest and continually ping us by email. Hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? And instead of getting tired about tired of that and shutting him down, we encourage you, right? I think mm -hmm. I was one of the people that was mm -hmm. behind you. And uh, when George expressed an interest to move over to uh, get the big bump in pay and uh, move the departments, I was totally behind it. And uh, now he's, uh, you're, you're on the fast track, man, buddy. I mean, you're, you're headed for management in no time at all, man, which is, you know, another success story. So once again, another ISSA uh, success story. So with that, George is uh, going to present today on Windows 7 Security. And with a warm welcome, let's give it to our newest uh, presenter. It's his first big presentation. Thank you, Pete. Today we'll be speaking about Windows 7 security. As Pete said, my name is George Archias, and I work with Terramark. Uh, since I am about two, three months in South Florida ISSA, allow me to introduce myself. I started in high school as an IT consultant about seven years ago, working the small, small and residential business and then slowly moving up uh, doing to small and medium business IT consulting. Uh, I then went to FIU to do the Active Directory migration project which was huge. About 3,600 machines had to be migrated to Active Directory. And after that, like Pete said, I went to corporate IT in Terramark which was a lot bigger than anything I had done before. Learning a lot and I started in the Security Operating Center a few months back as a security analyst. I uh, am currently pursuing my Master's of Science in Management and Information Systems. I graduate in December. Lots of hard work. Very excited. Um, I'm also working on authoring Microsoft Windows 7 Administrator's Reference with Syngris. It will be published in April 2010. So I hope you get that book over Microsoft Pressbooks. They teach you a little bit more, I promise. Are you, gonna have a, are you gonna have a book signing? Of course, I'll do a book signing, I'll coordinate with you. Okay. Because this, this will be my target market. It's uh, more for administrators, not the end user. You go to see Windows 7 books and they're mostly all for the end user or just administrators references, not a little bit of both. As you know, an administrator needs to know how to use the operating system, teach your users how to use the operating system and manage many, many desktops and laptops. And um, I have a few search, Cisco, Microsoft, Security Plus, and whatnot. What's the SSDS? Uh, that is Cisco Security Solutions Design Specialist. It was like three or four tests. Right, okay. That's right. So, Cisco, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Some Microsoft ones and Security Plus. I'm working on my G set, but I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now, so that one's in the back burner, but I'll get it. Uh, so a quick audience survey. I want to be very interactive with everyone, you know, be excited. I don't want you going to sleep or texting on your phones. Uh, <laughs> how many people use XP still in the corporation? Wow, a lot of hands. And at home? Yeah, all right. What about Vista? Ah, a few, not too many. Windows 7? All right. Oh, Five people. Good stuff. Mac? There you go. Awesome. I'm presenting from a Mac. You can't see it from there. <laughs> Linux and Unix? Yeah, good stuff, good stuff, all right. The reality of all this is that 88% of all desktop operating systems run some version of Windows. This was a survey done in March 2009. 10% uh, run Mac, 1% Linux, 
And you can't really see it, but half of a percent is an iPhone for a desktop market. I find that incredible. Oh, wow. no. <laughs> so, in reality, and a survey shows that between 78 to 94 percent of corporations skipped Vista. As I saw in here, a lot of you skipped Vista as well. So, new PCs were allowed to downgrade. You bought a new computer and you were allowed to downgrade or upgrade. Doesn't depends how you see it. 2 XP. But, as Windows 7 comes out, October 22nd, you're no longer going to get that option to downgrade to XP. You're going to have to choose between uh, Vista and 7. And I hope this will help you make a better decision as to where you go. As far as enterprise systems, you're going to be forced to upgrade from XP because they're going to terminate support. They're going to threaten that in, uh, in, so in 2014, extended support is going to be over, correct? We have a Microsoft employee here, so he's checking me everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> and the reality is Windows XP is eight years old, so it's, yeah. uh, we're going to be moving from it. So Windows Vista, everyone here thinks it's a failure. Why was it a failure? Bad press, people install it at home, bad driver support, horrible initial release. The service pack one fixed a lot of the issues, but... Um, Basically, yes, it was that bad. I'm glad you guys can relate. So, security-wise, was Vista really that much of a fail? Not so much. If we look at this chart that I actually stole from Microsoft, they had less patches to fix vulnerabilities in the first year, which was a horrible release year, than Windows XP, Mac OS, Ubuntu, and Red Hat. Furthermore, due to its UAC that no one liked, that was a little prompt before you were able to do anything, the likelihood of getting malware on Vista compared to XP Service Pack 2 was substantial. So the reason for this was a lot of security features. Uh, first of all, security development lifecycle. The previous speaker here spoke about it. After, I don't know, 30 years, Microsoft realized that security was something important. So they developed this uh, security development life cycle where they actually check their code to make sure it's secure. Uh, Windows service hardening, the, all the services that come with Windows with Vista and with new Windows 7 are a little bit more secure before they would leave everything open, even stuff that you've never used in your life. They introduced Windows Defender, which has ne I've never seen that stop any spyware, but it was just another step forward. Internet Explorer 7, it had a phishing filter. Eh. They did release, this was a big step, next generation TCP IP. I don't know if you remember back in the day when Microsoft released the TCP IP stack and basically took over. Um, the new one that was introduced in Vista and built on 7. Uh, uses IP version 6 that everyone should be moving to, but not happening. IPsec and Windows uh, filtering protocol. Or platform, sorry. Uh, the Vista firewall that was introduced uh, in XP as only outbound is now inbound for Vista. It had network access protection. Did anyone use this in their corporations to make sure that systems getting on VPN or anything? Okay, Microsoft used it. That's good to know. It had the UAC, which was the user account control. No one liked that this was what popped up every time you try to open an application or anything you really wanted to do, install things. It was constant and uh, very naggy credential prompting. It had code integrate and integrity where all the operating system DLLs and exec executables were digitally signed. And they introduced BitLocker, encrypted file system, and trusted platform module, which allowed for full disk encryption and whatnot. 